Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video of Seven Days to Die, I'm going to show you a horde base that is similar to the cave one I recently showed you. The one that was in the mountain. Now this one is probably more suited for building later in the game. This is uh, like a late tier one, made out of fortified steel and using hatches. Now how it works is basically, it's exactly the same as the other one. That you use hatches in a corridor and you're able to fight the enemies in a hallway. Now this isn't exclusively for melee only. This would actually work really well with firearms, especially if you've got the penetrator perk because you've got them all in a row. Your bullets could hit all of them. Now this works best if there's a lower amount of zombies. I've tested it with eight and 64. I'm showing you the eight at the moment. And as you can tell, it's actually quite anticlimactic. I'm able to stand there with a sledgehammer and auto attack the whole time, kill them nonstop. So, <laughs> If you set it up right, you should be able to just set it to auto attack and then you could have the horde node over and done with easily. This is a bit of a playthrough I've been doing. Uh, I was originally going to make it into a play series, but really got sick of Navas gang. I really did. Now auto attacking wasn't the best because dogs and that sort of stuff, it's harder to hit them. But I was able to get through most of the horde night without actually having to manually do a lot of it. Now how I believe the AI works now is they find the path of least resistance, I think. So the way I've made the walls is that they're two blocks thick. The roof is only one and the floor is only one. You don't really have to worry about the floor, but I figured if a cop came in and he blew up and it was dirt underneath the hatch, the hatch would probably just collapse. Now with this setup, I only needed one hatch with the eight zombies that were spawning because there just wasn't enough to make a difference. Now this one is not very suited for more than one player, unless you want the other player just to stand behind you and farm XP, which is a good idea. Unless you have one player stand in front and they crouch and hit things and the players behind can use, I don't know, range weapon or something. It's more than one way to skin a cat. And obviously being in there, you're not going to see many birds spawning and they could take up some of the zombie slots. But that's up to you. You can go out and kill them. Now here's a preview of what happened when I had 64 zombies on this. I had a base originally, but I built over it. <laughs> they just completely demolished the ground and not... <laughs> And a lot of what was underneath. I don't even know why. It's just the pathing of the zombies is a bit messed up. But it was funny nonetheless. I just thought I'd show you it. But yes, here is me doing Horde Night again with 64 zombies. This is how I originally did it. I tested it with this first. As you can see, I've only got a level 5 sledgehammer. But doing this night, I was able to get a level 6 sledgehammer from a yellow bag. And with this, I tried to add a few like pillars on the side to see if it would stop them from bouncing over. Though... It doesn't really work as intended. I think it might have actually made it worse. But as you can see here, it's just a meat grinder. They're just piling in. It was nuts. It's a lot of fun though. And if you've got a fair amount of health and good perks for durability and a sledgehammer, I think I got about, oh, was it about 500 kills doing this? As you can imagine, that's a lot of XP. Now, the issue with this is having this many zombies, I kept getting pushed out. As you can see, that is a lot. But it was a lot of fun. I delete them out and then I come back in and keep going. <laughs> I wasn't cheating or anything. There was just that many. And you have to be careful of cops when they explode too, because obviously they'll do a lot of damage, but they do a lot of damage then too. I keep getting pushed out numerous times. I think I got pushed out about five times throughout the whole night. Though I think the total amount of bags I got was about oh, 20, I think. I'm not sure if I had the perk book, but it makes them drop more often. But yeah, it's definitely worth it. You just teleport on top of the roof a lot of the time. <laughs> I don't know if that could be used for something. It might be a useful thing. So eventually I did get pushed into the wall and they could still sort of hit me here. So I was killing them while they were in the corridor, though the ones that were freshly spawning weren't going down the corridor so much. They were actually going to the outside to try and get me. Actually, now that I watched the footage, a lot of them were still going down the corridor. You can see here they start running out of the corridor and... Uh, to the outside because they think they might find it easier to get me from the outside yeah as you can see there's a lot there so this was a lot of fun but i learned a lot from it i came up with another design that's going to fix this issue of having too many zombies in the one spot and allows them to fill up a room and not to fall over the hatch now if you're going to do this from a lower level using like cobblestone or something or even rebar and just concrete i'd recommend not using vault hatches Use steel hatches instead. They're not going to be as durable, but if you use the hatches that are too strong, they're going to go for the walls instead. That's why I think it's the path of least resistance. Now, I'm not even going to show you how to build the design because it's that simple. It's literally five wide, corridor down the middle, and just make the walls too thick. And the floor, one thick, and the roof, one thick. 
That sounds weird, me saying one thick. <laughs> uh, I make myself laugh. Yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I should get them. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.